The inguinal canal is a very important uh, canal uh, clinically and it is made up of muscular part as well as the aponeurotic part of the external oblique, internal oblique as well as the transverse subdominal muscle all together will form a canal just above the inguinal ligament, uh, medial half of the inguinal ligament. Uh, this is the inguinal ligament here uh, from the medial half uh, in the uh, just above the medial half of the inguinal ligament you can see this canal uh, which is running from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring and it's almost four centimeters in length total length from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring and this directed downwards as well as forwards as well as medially it is directed medially downwards as well as forwards because the deep inguinal ring is deep inside uh, which is the opening in the transversalis fascia and the superficial inguinal ring is an opening in the external oblique muscle so it becomes almost oblique and it is uh, directed forwards from deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring so here also you can see this is the inguinal ligament just above that there is a canal uh, in the medial half uh, this is the superficial inguinal ring which is can be seen outside just uh, below the external oblique muscle upon neurosis and the deep inguinal ring will be connecting this canal to the uh, contents of the abdominal cavity so that is an opening in the transversalis fascia and this canal is uh, uh, much narrow in case of the female uh, uh, and it is uh, so that's why even the hernias are less common especially the inguinal hernias are less common in case of the female because of the narrowness of this canal this canal is said to be a, uh, a consequence of the erect posture of the human being. If you imagine that the, uh, uh, according to the theory of evolution, if the, uh, the primates have been evolved to the human beings and they say this is because of the, uh, the erect posture of the, uh, 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 of the human being and this canal is uh, actually uh, this opening is uh, not seen in case of the primate so that's why the inguinal hernias are not seen in case of the lower animals like the monkeys and other apes but it is said to be a, a byproduct of or uh, the effect of er erect posture of the human being so that's why this uh, uh, has developed and this is uh, just the consequence of her posture so this canal can be seen in case of the human beings and this canal is very important because sometimes the abdominal contents protrude through this canal which leads to a condition called as inguinal hernia we'll talk about that later before we go to the inguinal hernia we should know what exactly are the contents of this inguinal canal why it is so important this canal is important because it gives passage for a very important structure in case of the male that is the spermatic cord through which the sperms will be drained from the testis into the external world okay so this is the spermatic cord if you can see in this picture so which is coming through the deep inguinal ring and it comes out through the superficial inguinal ring and uh, descend down into the scrotum uh, in case of the female instead of the uh, spermatic cord because the females don't have spermatic cord uh, instead there will be a round ligament of uterus which is a very important ligament uh, to hold the uterus in its position so it is a fibro muscular or fibrous uh, ligament which is mainly responsible for the antiversion and antiflexion of the uterus okay one of the many ligaments okay so this will be uh, the content one is the spermatic cord in case of male and this and in case of female it will be round ligament of uterus the second important structure which will be present in this canal will be the ilio inguinal nerve if you can see here along with the, uh, the spermatic cord you can see a structure coming this is the nerve this is the ilio inguinal nerve which is a very important nerve which will be uh, uh, mainly uh, for the sensation around the around the genital system coming to the boundaries of this canal canal has an anterior wall a posterior wall a roof a floor as well as inlet and outlet outlet we have seen this is the outlet that is the superficial inguinal ring inlet will be deep inguinal ring it will have an anterior this is the anterior wall made up of the the external oblique muscle as well as its aponeurosis then the posterior wall will go into its details one by one the anterior wall as you know it is very superficial just deep to the skin and the muscle 
So the first structure if you uh, cut across uh, to approach the inguinal canal will be the skin. Then you have the superficial fascia which as you already seen there are two uh, superficial fascias fascia of camphor as well as the fascia of scarpa. Then deep to that will be the, the main muscle which is the external oblique muscle. This is the muscle here, external oblique muscle. Uh, most of it converts itself into an aponeurosis and it runs downwards and it twists on itself. Okay, partly it is on the lateral part it is muscular. Uh, if not, the most of the part will be by the aponeurosis of the external oblique. Okay, so it will twist and turn in itself inside and it uh, leads to the uh, the uh, formation of the canal deep inside this muscle or the aponeurosis of this muscle to be more uh, 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 precise. The lateral one third is also covered by along with the external oblique muscle because as you have seen the origin of the internal oblique as well as some fibers of even the transverse abdominis will be taking origin from the, the inguinal ligament itself. So those fibers can also be seen especially the internal oblique muscle will be forming the anterior wall in the lateral one third. Coming to the posterior wall, posterior wall as you have seen it is totally deficient, it is just made up of the fascia that is called as the transversalis fascia. Okay, so if you can see here this is the, uh, the spermatic cord which is running and all the muscles have been removed in the front and in the above. So you can see deep inside we can see just the transversalis fascia which is entirely uh, forming the posterior wall and partly it is also covered by uh, a conjoint tendon on the medial side conjoint tendon is the tendon uh, that is formed by the aponeurosis of the internal oblique as well as the transverse abdominis fusion of the inter internal oblique as well as the transverse abdominis on the medial uh, half okay so that also forms uh, the posterior wall in the medial half as well as uh, there is also a part of the reflected part of the uh, reflected part of the inguinal ligament so this is the inguinal ligament which is nothing but the aponeurosis of the external oblique as i said it will twist and turn and go deep inside and it uh, converts itself into a canal a part of it also get reflected here okay so that is called as the reflected part of the inguinal ligament and that also partly forms the the posterior wall in the medial one fourth okay so here this is uh, just again to show the the extra oblique muscle and its aponeurosis which has twist and turn uh, uh, medially or inside deep inside and then it uh, forms the inguinal ligament here this is the inguinal ligament extending from the uh, the anti superior leg span to the pubic, pubic tubercle and this as i said this inguinal ligament is not a true ligament but it is part of the muscle but because it is between the two ligament uh, two bones and this is aponeurosis that's what is called a ligament if not it is not a true ligament now if you can see uh, the same uh, uh, inguinal canal uh, you can see this is the internal oblique muscle which is taking origin from the lateral uh, uh, two thirds or one third of the inguinal ligament and it also forms the the anterior wall uh, partly and then it uh, if you can see here it runs above that and it forms the roof over the uh, canal okay so when we study the roof then we'll study that also along with that even you can see the transverse abdominis that is also taking partly from the the inguinal ligament and this muscle also runs uh, over the canal and it forms the roof of this canal and then this internal oblique as well as the transverse abdominis upon neurosis join together and form the conjoint tendon which is called as the conjoint tendon which form the posterior wall now if you can see this picture uh, this is one of the picture which i have taken uh, from the internet and you can see this is the anterior wall formed by the external oblique muscle as well as its aponeurosis see the aponeurosis runs downwards twists inside and it forms the floor of this canal also then we have the posterior wall which is completely formed by the the transversalis fascia and partly by mm, the muscles we have already told and the internal oblique and transverse abdominis mainly form the roof as we have seen they will be running over the canal okay so the roof is formed by the arch fibers of the internal oblique as well as the transverse abdominis so internal oblique as well as the transverse abdominis 
arches over this roof and it formed the the roof of this canal okay and the floor as you already seen it is formed by the uh, grooved upper surface of the inguinal ligament so this external oblique muscle um, uh, runs downwards as aponeurosis and uh, this will form the the floor so it is formed by the grooved upper surface of the inguinal ligament which is nothing but the aponeurosis of the external oblique the posterior margin of which fuses with the fascia fascia transversal if you can see here the fascia transversal is coming down and this will join with the the floor of the inguinal canal medially the floor is formed by the upper surface of the lunate ligament in the, uh, here on the medial surface even the lunate ligament will form the the floor okay. If not, it is mainly by the, the aponeurosis of the extra oblique muscle which form the floor. Okay. So, this is all about the, the anterior wall, posterior wall, roof and the floor. So, here also in this picture you can see uh, this is the transverse abdomen which is arching as well as even the inter oblique will arch and it forms the roof and partly it is anterior wall, partly it is roof as well as partly it is the posterior wall so it forms the intraoblique as well as the transverse abdominis mainly from the anti uh, partly it forms the anterior wall partly it forms the roof as well as partly it also forms the the uh, posterior wall of the inguinal canal now we know that uh, the inguinal canal uh, contains two structures as we have already identified one is the spermatic cord in case of the male or uh, round ligament in case of the female and the second is the ilioinguinal nerve okay so one is the spermatic cord so what is the sp spermatic cord or what uh, the uh, constituents of the spermatic cord so that uh, that we will see now okay the first uh, important content of the spermatic cord is the vas deferens the main ductus deferens which will be carrying the the sperms uh, from the testes uh, to the external world okay so here you can see here this is the ductus difference or uh, it is also called as the vas difference the spermatic cord has been totally dissected and you can see one of the content of this will be the ductus difference this is the picture again i have taken from, taken from the internet and this ductus difference uh, is seen uh, this is the whole spermatic cord and one of the main content will be the ductus difference Apart from this, there are some arteries which are present along with this uh, ductus deferens. So one is called as uh, the art, uh, the testicular artery, very important artery which will be supplying the testis. So this is the testicular artery which is passing through this uh, spermatic cord and through the uh, the inguinal canal. The second important artery will be the cremastric artery, and the third artery will be the artery to the vas itself. So vas deferens is there. The artery to vas is also present in the same uh, spermatic cord apart from these arteries there is a uh, some important veins are also there one of the very important vein is the the pampaniform plexus as you know pampaniform plexus there is a plexus of vein which are around the the testis as well as even in case of the female around the ovaries the typical feature of this pampaniform plexus is they will drain into the uh, either testicular vein in case of the male or the ovarian vein in case of the female and on the right side this will be draining at an angle acute angle into the uh, inferior vena cava the testicular vein and on the left side it will draining at right angles to the uh, to the uh, left renal vein and it will be draining into the left renal vein and at a an right angle okay so it is totally against the gravity and it has to drain into the uh, renal vein left renal vein and because it will be horizontal and this will be vertical so uh, the drainage will be of the venous drainage will be much more difficult and if there is a, a loss of potency of the the uh, the function of the valves then uh, it leads to varicosity of the vein and it is most commonly seen on the left side than on the right side because on the right um, because on the left side as i said it will draining the testicular vein will be draining at an angle of 90 degree into the renal vein and from there into the inferior vein cava so more pressure is needed and if there is a loss in the elasticity of the valves then it leads to varicosity of the veins and you can see it as a bag of worms on the left side especially because it is common on the 
more on, common on the left side and it will be seen as a bag of worms and this is called as the varicose seal okay so the easily you can identify the varicose seal by the uh, the feature of bag of worms in the scrotum you feel as though there are bag of worms this is because of the the plexus which is formed by pampaniform plexus so clinically this pampaniform plexus is important and you should know that this uh, varicose seal is more common on the left side because the vein main vein which will be draining into uh, uh, the main vein which will be draining this pampaniform plexus will be the uh, the testicular vein the left testicular vein which opens into the left renal vein at an angle of 90 degree okay so it has to flow against the gravity okay so that's why it is more common on the left side so this is one of the important uh, pampaniform plexus which is an important vein plexus of vein present here along with that there are some lymphatics of the testes which are also uh, training uh, through this uh, spermatic cord and there are some important nerves also one of the very important nerve is the genital branch of genitofemoral nerve so this is the main nerve which will be supplying the the genital region as well as the even the testicular plexus of the sympathetic nerves especially coming from t10 as well as the sympathetic plexus around the artery of vas as you know around the arteries there will be a plexus of nerves and uh, here also it is present especially around the artery of vas apart from that uh, all this content there is large quantity of or huge quantity of air la tissue which will help in the protection of this important structure the vas difference as well as the testicular artery and other structures which are passing through this spermatic cord so you should know the the contents of this spermatic cord one is the vas difference then the artery uh, especially arteries especially the testicular artery gymnastic artery as well as the artery to vas then the veins especially the pampaniform plexus then the lymphatics to testes uh, draining from the testis and then some important nerves like the genital branch of genitofemoral nerve along with that the sympathetic nerve plexus can also be seen and and this all these are covered by a thick ear you know, uh, uh, fat tissue which is around them okay so these are some of the contents of the spermatic cord now coming to something called as mechanism of inguinal canal usually as you know the inguinal canal will be closed with its content that is the uh, spermatic cord or the round ligament of uterus in case of the female as well as the ilioinguinal nerve with these two contents it will be usually closed okay uh, and this is important especially if it is patent or if the structures which are opening it if they are not strong enough then the uh, the contents especially which are there in the abdomen because of the increase intra uh, intra abdominal pressure these contents might pass through the inguinal canal and they might protrude out so there are some mechanisms which keep this inguinal canal close so what are these mechanisms we'll study them one by one the first me mechanism which will keep the inguinal canal close is the flap valve mechanism this is as you know the the superficial inguinal ring is superficial uh, which is an opening in the external oblique and the uh, the deep inguinal ring is an opening within the transversalis fascia transversalis fascia is deep inside and the superficial inguinal ring is superficial so if you see the canal it will be uh, oblique in nature okay so it is opening from the deep structures and it is opening superficially okay so this obliquity of this inguinal canal uh, this will uh, keep the uh, the canal close and as you know the deep inguinal ring is somewhere else it is in near the midpoint of the inguinal ligament and the superficial inguinal ring is near the pubic crest okay so they are not in the same position so if there is increase in the intra, uh, intra abdominal pressure then it leads to uh, um, all the muscles coming uh, um, in contact with the external oblique muscle and they will press and this um, even the openings will be closed by the increase in intra abdominal pressure so they all close this uh, 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 canal okay and because the uh, openings both the openings are not in the same line so the uh, contents do not protrude out but 
this whole canal will close so this is called as uh, the flap valve mechanism the second mechanism is called as ball valve mechanism as you know in case of the male the chromastric muscle will be covering the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, from the root up to the whole of the scrotum like this so if you can see here there is the the chromastric muscle which is coming um, and running downwards and it covers the whole of the spermatic cord as well as the in uh, the testis below the uh, root of the scrotum okay below the the opening superficial inguinal ring so it is totally covered by this muscle called as the chromastic muscle which is seen in case of males okay uh, this muscle uh, if you stroke this muscle with a pen or a sharp object then it leads to contraction of this muscle and this will pull the muscle upwards this is called as the chromastic reflex if you uh, just give a stroke on this muscle and then uh, just lateral to this uh, lateral to the scrotum then you can see that this muscle will contract and pull the testis upwards this pulling of the testis upwards and closing the inguinal the superficial inguinal ring this is called as uh, the the uh, the ball valve mechanism where this chromastic muscle will pull the the testis itself upwards and it totally plucks or blocks this superficial inguinal ring this is called as the ball valve mechanism because this is the ball which will be pulled upwards and it closes the the superficial inguinal ring this is because of the the chromastic muscle with the chromastic reflex the third mechanism is called as shutter mechanism as you have seen the internal oblique as well as the transverse abdominal muscle they form the anterior wall the roof as well as the posterior wall okay this uh, two muscles especially the internal oblique because it forms the most of the uh, some especially the lateral part of the anterior wall the roof as well as the posterior wall this muscle because it is forming all so this muscle can be pulled down just like a shutter whenever this muscle contract so this will be pulled downwards and it totally blocks this canal so this is called as the shutter mechanism this is because of the the uh, relation of the internal oblique to the uh, the inguinal canal it from the anterior wall the roof as well as the posterior wall so whenever it is pulled down because of the pressure or contraction of the internal oblique then it totally blocks this canal so this is called a shutter mechanism which again prevents the hernia formation of hernias then there is also something called as the slit valve mechanism where uh, approximation of the two crore of the external oblique if you know the external oblique will split here into two and this canal will be in between them okay the superficial inguinal ring will be between the two splits of the the external oblique muscle when it is getting inserted it splits into two these are called as the two crore of the external oblique muscle so this um, whenever the external oblique muscle contracts these two crore will come or approach each other they come closer and they totally block the the superficial inguinal ring so this is called as the slit valve mechanism because it is slit between the the two crore of the external oblique muscle which will uh, try to uh, close whenever there is contraction of the external oblique so these are some of the mechanisms by which the uh, the inguinal canal is kept close but still there might be uh, hernias because of uh, uh, because of the loss of uh, these mechanisms one or more of these mechanisms okay and the main uh, uh, finally uh, the important uh, hormones which will again strengthen the the uh, anti abdominal muscles those are also important part for this thing uh, cannot to be um, um, prevent uh, hernias okay so these are some of the mechanism by which the inguinal canal is kept close one is the flap valve mechanism which is also because of the obliquity of the uh, the canal the superficial and deep inguinal ring are different position the second is the ball valve mechanism because of the chromastic muscle which uh, with the chromastic reflex will pull the testis the third is the shutter mechanism the different position of the internal oblique anterior roof as well as the posterior wall Whenever, whenever it is pulled, it uh, falls down like a shutter, which will pull pull down and close the canal. Then slit valve mechanism, the uh, there are two insertion of the external oblique, 
which splits and get inserted uh, and this superficial inguinal ring will be in between the two slits of the external oblique so whenever the external oblique is uh, contracted it will close the superficial inguinal try to close the superficial inguinal ring okay and the hormones which will strengthen the anti abdominal wall okay now coming to something called uh, hernias hernias as you know these are the abnormal protrusion of the abdominal contents through this canal as you have seen the canal is prevented from uh, uh, protrusion of any content from the abdominal content through this canal but sometimes even then there might be loss of this mechanism and there might be protrusion of the abdominal contents like the intestine the urine bladder or something like that and this might uh, protrude out through the anti abdominal wall that is called as hernia this is abnormal protrusion of the abdominal contents through the anti abdominal wall so now there are different types of hernias okay uh, uh, especially we should know the uh, inguinal hernia this inguinal hernia is called inguinal hernia because it passes through the inguinal ring okay superficial and deep inguinal ring sometimes uh, both sometimes only one okay and it is above the inguinal uh, uh, ligament so that's what is called as inguinal hernias okay now we should know what are the different types of inguinal hernias and other hernias one is the inguinal hernia as i said they, they might be direct as well as indirect inguinal hernias apart from that there are uh, reducible hernias these hernias sometimes they can be reduced when the person lies down it can be reduced automatically or with some manual pressure you might reduce the hernia sometimes they are irreducible you cannot reduce the hernias when the contents come out of the abdominal anti abdominal wall then they will stay there okay you cannot reduce it with pressure or by lying down the most important as well as complicated one is the strangulated hernia where the the hernia is not only irreducible but it is totally strangulated that might block the arteries and that leads to gangrene and this uh, uh, might lead to peritonitis and death of the person so the most complicated one will be the the strangulated hernia where the arteries are blocked once the hernia is there if you can see here this is uh, the hernia internal inguinal ring which is blocking this is the loop of intestine which is passing through it and this is uh, uh, the ring and sometimes this ring becomes f uh, fastened or tightened which leads to blocking of the arteries which are supplying this part of the intestine that leads to gangrene okay again the her direct hernias are again direct divided into direct and uh, direct medial as well as direct lateral and indirect hernias will be uh, divided into congenital hernia congenital funicular hernias infantile hernias interstitial hernias as well as the bulbino seen okay now we should know what exactly is the uh, direct and indirect inguinal hernias this picture uh, uh, actually uh, uh, differentiate between the direct and indirect hernia okay so what is this direct and indirect so we have seen that one of the very important artery which will be supplying the anti-abdominal wall will be the inferior epigastric artery which is coming from below and the superior epigastric artery which is coming uh, from above which both will anastomose so if you see inferiorly this inferior epigastric artery will be present here and the content if the abdominal contents protrude out medial to that then it is called as the direct and if it is uh, uh, protruding, uh, protruding you know, from the lateral side of the inferior epigastric artery then it is called as the indirect inguinal hernia okay what exactly does it mean it means that if the contents passes through the deep inguinal ring then pass through the canal and comes out through the superficial inguinal ring then it is called as indirect hernia okay so once again i repeat if the structures or the contents of the abdomen pass through the deep inguinal ring and then pass through the inguinal canal and comes out through the superficial inguinal ring and they uh, descend into the scrotum uh, 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 somewhere else uh, on the anti abdominal wall from the superficial inguinal ring then it is called as the indirect hernia sometimes what happens because of the weakness of the anti abdominal wall some of the contents directly uh, press on the anti abdominal wall or they invaginate into the anti abdominal wall and they directly come to the superficial inguinal ring without passing through the deep inguinal ring 
ओके सो दीज आर कॉल्ड एज डायरेक्ट इंगोनल हर्नियास सो डायरेक्ट इंगोनल हर्नियास आर मीडियल टू दि इनफीएपी गैस्ट्रिक कार्ट बिकॉज दे आर डायरेक्टली प्रोट्रिंग प्रोट्रूडिंग आउट थ्रू दि एंड वीकनेस ऑफ द एंटी एपडमल वॉल एंड देन दे कम थ्रू दि सुपरफिशियल इंगोनल रिंग बट इन केस ऑफ दि इनडायरेक्ट हर्नियास दे पास थ्रू दि प्रॉपर पैसेज दैट इज डीप इंगोनल रिंग देन द इंगोनल कैन आर एंड देन कम्स आउट थ्रू दि सुपरफिशियल इंगोनल रिंग सो दैट्स वाई दे आर ऑन द लैटरल साइड lateral to the inferior epigastric artery indirect hernias and direct hernias or medial to the inferior epigastric artery okay so this about the to differentiate between the uh, the anterior uh, the direct as well as the indirect hernias there are other types of hernia which you should know uh, we will not go into detail just will uh, mention them okay one of the type of hernia is the epigastric hernias okay and sometime there might be uh, hernias through the umbilical Uh, uh, cord uh, uh, umbilical cord and this called are the umbilical hernias some uh, these are the uh, inguinal hernias which have we talked about similarly there is a femoral canal in, in the medial part of the high uh, thigh and from there there might be uh, uh, again protrusion of the content that is called as the femoral hernia okay apart from that there are some hernias called as incisional hernias as i said before there is at the center the two aponeuroses of the uh, two sides of the anti abdominal wall muscles external oblique internal oblique transverse abdominis they fuse in the midline and then i said that is called as the linea alba so that is the least vascular structure so previously what the surgeon used to do is they used to do surgeries on this least vascular area that is uh, the on the linea alba but the disadvantage of uh, less vascularity is even the healing will be very less as well as weak so that leads to, led to the uh, uh, hernias through this uh, uh, incised part those are called as the incisional hernias they can be seen in other parts also like in this picture the incision is somewhere else but still there can be hernias from the other side also but this is most commonest if you do it on the linea alba the hernias in incisional hernias are very common okay but it can be seen on the other parts also if you are doing nowadays they have totally stopped doing surgeries on this linea alba because this leads to lot of complication especially the incisional hernia now they uh, cut the other parts of the abdomen uh, there can be hernias but they are rare compared to the linea alba so these are called as the incisional hernias now coming to the last part of this lecture that is the difference between the direct as well as the indirect hernias so what are the differences we have studied uh, uh, the difference what exactly is the difference between direct and indirect uh, we should know more of those details so what are the differences okay one is in case of the indirect hernia the hernial sacs enters through the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring as we have seen it passes through the proper passage it passes through the uh, the deep inguinal ring then passes through the inguinal canal and comes out to the superficial inguinal ring that is called as the indirect hernia okay so even the hernial sac enters through the but in case of the direct hernia uh, this uh, hernial sac uh, passes through Uh, the inguinal triangle of Hasselbeck. What is this Hasselbeck triangle? So going back to this again, this picture. Okay, uh, we have seen on the lateral side of the direct hernia, we have this inferior epigastric artery. Okay, medially we have the linea alba, and below we have the inguinal canal. Okay, or the inguinal ligament to be more specific. Okay, the the inguinal ligament. So these three boundaries will uh, uh, form, and this triangle is called as the Hasselbeck triangle. So Hasselbeck triangle is a triangle. Uh, the boundaries are on the lateral side. We have the inferior epigastric artery here. It actually it will be running like this. Okay, inferior epigastric artery. On the medial side, we have the uh, the uh, linea alba, and inferiorly, or the floor will be formed by the the inguinal ligament okay so this triangle is called as the the hasselbeck triangle so this is this hasselbeck triangle so this hernia will be entering through the the hasselbeck triangle okay directly through the hasselbeck triangle and comes out through the superficial inguinal ring but in case of the indirect hernia it passes through a deep inguinal ring passes through the whole of the inguinal canal and then comes out this through the superficial inguinal ring okay 
The second difference is the neck of the hernial sac lies lateral to the inferior epigastric artery. Going back again to, the, to this picture, so the, uh, the, in case of the indirect hernia, the contents, the, uh, the hernial sac will be lateral to the inferior epigastric artery. Okay, but in case of the direct hernia, it will be medial to the inferior epigastric artery. So this is the uh, second difference. One is uh, the hernial sac will be passing through the whole canal, but in case of direct hernia, it will pass through the Hasselbeck's triangle. Second, the hernial sac will be lateral to the, the inferior epigastric artery, but in case of the direct hernia, it will be coming from medial to the inferior epigastric artery with the picture we have understood. The third is the in case of the indirect hernia, this is usually unilateral and this is especially in case of engage, especially it will be genital, congenital. Okay, it will be congenital, sorry, it will be congenital and usually it will be unilateral, especially because if the, the part of the peritoneum, when the testicle descend downwards, it pulls a part of the peritoneum that is called as the process vaginalis. Sometimes this process vaginalis will be patent, that is called as the patent process vaginalis. If it is patent, then the contents will be passing through, easily coming and going through it. Okay. So that is called as reducible hernia. Okay, so this is common, especially and even the other types uh, because of the congenital uh, uh, formation. So that's why this will be seen in the indirect hernias will be seen in the engage and usually it is unilateral. But in case of the direct hernia, this is because of the weakness of the anti-abdominal wall. This is usually seen in the old age. So that's why it will be common. Direct hernias will be usually on the old age and because there is a weakness in the anti-abdominal wall, it will be bilateral because weakness is on both the sides. So usually it will be bilateral. So direct hernias will be bilateral and it is in common in the old age. But in case of indirect hernias, it will be common in the young age and it has to, uh, it will be usually unilateral, usually, okay. And as I said, the congenital hernias will be usually, the cause might be congenital. But in case of the direct hernia, because it is, uh, because of the weakness of the anti-abdominal wall, this is usually acquired. In case of the indirect hernias, uh, it will receive all the coverings of the spermatic cord because it is passing through the deep inguinal ring, then to a canal and coming out through the superficial inguinal ring. It will be taking all its uh, coverings along with that. But in case of the direct hernias, this will not take all the, it will not receive all the coverings because it is directly protruding through the anti-abdominal wall and comes out through the superficial inguinal ring. The last is the direction of this hernia. It will be in case of direct hernia, indirect hernia, because it is coming from the lateral to medial side from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring. So it will be directed downwards, forwards, as well as directed medially. But in case of the direct hernia, because it is directly protruded down out through the, uh, the uh, superficial inguinal ring after the uh, protruding through the anti-abdominal wall, then this will be directly straight forward. Okay, so this is the direction of the uh, uh, the opening of this hernias. Okay, so these are some of the differences between the indirect and direct hernia. Okay, so here this is picture uh, again from the Gray's Anatomy. So it is showing you uh, the uh, deeping uh, the uh, indirect hernias from the uh, differentiating between the indirect and direct hernia. In case of the indirect hernia, it is passing through the deeping one ring then passes through the superficial inguinal ring and then it is coming descending into the scrotum. Okay, so here you can see this is the peritoneal sac and this is because of the patency of the process vaginalis. But in case of the direct hernia, instead of passing through a deep inguinal ring, it is not passing through a deep inguinal ring, but it is directly protruding through the, the weakness of the wall of the anti-abdominal wall and then it comes out to the superficial inguinal ring. So this is how uh, there is difference between the indirect hernias and the direct hernias. Now coming to the uh, final uh, slide where uh, how to differentiate between uh, indirect and direct hernia clinically. I will not go, there are different methods but one method is by applying. First ask the person to uh, lie down in case, especially in case of reducible hernia, uh, you have to ask the person to lie down as well as uh, 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 check whether the all the contents have gone bang. If not, manually reduce and uh, re totally reduce the hernia. Once it is reduced, now apply the pressure on the 
मिड पॉइंट ऑफ द इंगवेनल लिगामेंट एज यू नो दिस ओपनिंग द डीप इंगवेनल रिंग इज जस्ट बिहाइंड द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ द इंगवेनल लिगामेंट ओके सो जस्ट अप्लाई प्रेशर on that uh, uh, deep inguinal ring and then ask the person to stand and cough apply pressure on the abdomen if this content is uh, coming from the deep inguinal ring that is indirect hernia then because of this pressure the contents will not come down they cannot descend downwards into the canal and from there into superficial inguinal ring so usually there is a hernia but with this pressure after reducing then the contents cannot come into the scrotum then it is uh, identified that it is indirect hernia but in case of the direct hernia because it is not coming through the deep inguinal ring it is not coming through the deep inguinal ring but because of the weakness of the anti abdominal wall itself so they directly protrude out through the anti abdominal wall into the superficial inguinal ring so if this content of the of the abdominal content protrude out and there is formation of the hernia there is appearance of the hernia uh, over the scrotum or to, over the superficial inguinal ring then it means that this is a uh, direct hernia because it is coming not from the deep inguinal ring but it is directly from the uh, the weakness of the anti abdominal wall so this is how you can identify the direct hernia and differentiate from the direct hernia from that of the indirect hernia just uh, reduce the hernia and apply pressure and ask the person to cough as well as stand so if the content comes out to the hernia then it is uh, direct hernia and if it doesn't come out then it means that it is indirect hernia okay so this is all about the anti abdominal wall as well as the inguinal hernias as well as uh, the uh, to the uh, st uh, steps how you can differentiate between direct and indirect hernia coming uh, lastly to the lymphatic drainage as you know uh, this whole of this lower part of the abdomen especially uh, below the umbilicus will be draining into the the superficial inguinal group of lymph nodes as you know there are vertical groups as well as the horizontal group so even the horizontal group is divided into upper medial as well as the upper lateral so these are the group of lymph nodes where the lymphatic drainage of the lower part of the uh, anti abdominal wall as well as even the lower limbs will be okay so this is all about the anti abdominal wall as well as the inguinal hernia so if you have any uh, questions you can just write to me and i will try to answer so these are my references mainly the pictures are from the gray's anatomy and some other textbooks as well as from the uh, internet thank you very much